Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Qing Xu, a research assistant professor from Tsinghua University. Uh, in today's uh, future automobiles class, we will talk about intelligent and connected vehicles in China. Uh, as the host, the organizer suggests to us, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to raise them in the Q&A section. Uh, there should be a Q&A section in the Zoom, uh, uh, Zoom Xu, system. I'm a research assistant professor. Uh, from, okay, I'll adjust the camera. Here. Is that okay? Uh, please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A sections. Uh, by the end of the class, I will try to answer uh, one or two of your questions. And... Uh, I'll send back your uh, the answers to the other questions later. All right. So today's class, we will discuss about the uh, ICVs in China. First of all, I would like to quickly discuss the background and uh, localized ICV solutions in China. Uh, intelligent and connected vehicles, which is also called connected and automated vehicles in the US, uh, is the fusion of autonomous vehicles and connected vehicles, of course. Uh, it brings out new products, new paradigm, and new ecosystems. Uh, as shown in this picture, there are two approaches uh, to develop intelligent and connected vehicles. One is to develop onboard intelligence, like uh, to equip better computers on or onboard embedded system and better sensors. Uh, to develop toward autonomous vehicles. The other one uh, is to develop connected intelligence using the V2X and uh, roadside cameras, uh, and uh, sometimes maybe the cloud uh, toward the connected intelligence. Uh, different from the conventional vehicles, there are two major features of intelligent and connected vehicles. Number one is the uh, interdisciplinary and cross-industry integration. Uh, so as, as shown in the slide, uh, I like the conventional vehicle, which is a mechatronic product. ICV requires the fusion of the mechatronics and ICT technologies, uh, including the communication, computing, and so on. This underlines the industrial integration of automotive transportation, information, and communication technologies. And number two, ICV has strong regional and social properties. Uh, the operation of ICV requires support of telecommunication maps and data and so on, of which under security monitoring uh, due to the national security, uh, national security sensitivities. Uh, so each country, including China, has its own standard and regulations. Localized factors exist in the development and uh, application of ICVs. Uh, the Chinese government promotes the policies and the regulations for the ICVs very actively. Uh, the government has established some cross-department coordina uh, coordination process and uh, formed some top design for the development of ICVs. For example, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technologies launched the ICV Development Action Plan, which is very important. Uh, the Development and the Reform Commission launched the ICV Innovative Development Strategies. The Ministry of Transportation strengthened the product application and the pilot demonstration, and the Ministry of Natural Resource expanded the market of map and the positioning applications. Uh, for example, uh, the Innovative Development Strategy of Intelligent Vehicles released by the NDRC which was sh is short, uh, short for National Development and Reform Commission. Uh, in their uh, strategy, uh, there are both long-term vision from 2035 to 2050 and some short-term short goals up to 2025. Uh, for the development of ICVs, they uh, try to stimulate the enterprise establishment, market uh, fostering, and uh, some infrastructure development and deployment. A localized solution for the ICVs in China is very necessary. Uh, there is yet no experience of successful applications of ICVs exist any 
where any country in the world. Uh, the localized solution of ICV innovation and development in China shall be planned not to uh, not only according to the need of technology and industry development, but also some there are some specific conditions in China that should be considered. So to develop uh, automated driving vehicles, there are two approaches. Uh, number one, shown as uh, in the, this the first picture, uh, the increased uh, incremental paradigm of vehicle intelligent level improvement. Uh, this means uh, to gradually increase the intelligence level for the automated vehicles uh, from level one to level two, level two to level three, level three to level four and so on. However, uh, current gaps in the automotive electronics control and uh, actuator designs in China would uh, uh, be continuously expanded following this process and uh, might result in, here shown in the slides, uh, hollowness of the core technologies in the automotive industry. Uh, another path uh, is uh, to focus on some uh, high level autonomous vehicles. Uh, if China do so, China might end up in an uh, embracing situation due to some critical disadvantages on some core technologies. Um, currently, China is developing the sensor MCU and uh, some two chains, but that's not enough. So thus, China is trying to focus on some localized properties of the intelligent and connected vehicles. Uh, the communication map and the data would be important for the localized solution for the SUVs in China. Uh, so, so what is the localized SUV solutions? Uh, the localized SUV solutions in China should follow the following three standards. Number one is to comply with Chinese infrastructure standards, including the standards with, uh, for the roadside infrastructure, map data, reflex communication, and so on. Number two, it should follow the Chinese connected operation standards, including standards of SV access supervision of connected operation, information security, and so on. Number three, they should comply with the new standard architecture of automotive product in China, including standard of intelligent terminal, intelligent onboard computing system, the cloud control platform, and so on. Uh, that requires us to develop and the uh, design and develop some unified fundamental technologies to support uh, the automated driving applications. So to do so, uh, the experts in China uh, had a long-term discussion and the five basic platforms, uh, uh, the, the conclusion was that five uh, basic platforms must get developed. And they are the basic computing platform, uh, basic intelligent terminal platform, basic cloud control platform, basic dynamic HD map, high definition map platform, and uh, cybersecurity platform. Those five basic platforms uh, will provide fundamental and common technologies for the autom uh, automated driving application developers and decouple them from the unique Chinese standards. Uh, to better understand send what uh, we said in the last slide, um, we can uh, have a discuss in this slide. So currently uh, there are OEM tier one and tier two, maybe it's tier three and so on. Uh, tier one companies provide the product uh, to the car OEM and tier two companies provide some key components like chips, or here, right, core system, or maybe maybe some IP cores uh, to the tier one companies. Uh, in the future, there will be some space between tier one and tier two. We call them tier one point five, uh, one tier one point five companies. Um, those companies will work on some new crossover technologies. Uh, like the basic software architecture, some AI applications, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, and the basic platform components uh, and services shown on in last slide will be the output, will be their product. 
Uh, so in this slide, we take the basic onboard computing platform as an example. Uh, the companies below the tier 1.5, uh, they uh, provide the basic computing platform, which includes the chips, IP cores from the tier 2 as before, and the tier 1.5 to provide the ICV OS, which is uh, extended OS concept, some uh, function software and uh, some basic uh, uh, board reference design. Uh, and uh, then tier one will use the output from the tier 1.5 and uh, to write and design their own applications and customize their own circuit board, uh, write their uh, application softwares and provide the product to the OEM. Uh, there are some these kind of companies in China already. The CSCV, uh, which is short, short for China ICV, is a typical company that uh, integrates the resources from the industry uh, uh, and uh, to form a new tier 1.5 basic computing platform company. Uh, the automated driving OS, or we can call that the ICV OS, uh, is their main product. All right. Uh, this is another diagram describing the relationship among the OEM tier one, tier 1.5, and the tier two companies. Uh, similar to the previous slide, the tier one companies get resources from lots of uh, different um, wide tier two industrial chains and uh, try to provide some basic fundamental computing platform with a uh, hardware reference design and the ICV OS. The tier one and OEM based on what tier 1.5 provides them, customize their own upper level applications according to the requirement from the customers and provide the product to them. All right. That's the background and the localized ICV solutions in China. Uh, and in the following section, we will continue talk about a uh, typical new infrastructure in China, the cloud control system. So cloud control system, or we will start by the basic cloud control system. A basic cloud control platform is one of the five fundamental or five basic platforms in China, as we uh, introduced before. If we get a glance, uh, if, if we get a glance of the traffic system in the future, uh, with the support of the cloud control system, the vehicles are expected to certify safety, fuel economy, uh, convenience, and uh, efficiency. Uh, China was one of the first countries to classify the levels of intelligence and the connections of intelligent and connected vehicles. Uh, in 2016, uh, the levels of uh, the connectivity of ICVs was first uh, proposed in the technical roadmap here, uh, uh, of the ICVs in China. Uh, three levels of connectivity were classified, including connected assistance information interaction, connected cooperative perception, connected uh, cooperative decision-making and control. Um, this was an inno innovative concept uh, and a new path for the industry uh, to develop the intelligent and connected vehicles. Some detailed technical framework uh, were under revision. Uh, that means uh, to develop some uh, specific AD tasks, uh, we have two approaches, uh, similar as, as the very first slide uh, at the very beginning. Uh, we can um, either uh, to develop some onboard intelligence, or we can develop some uh, connected intelligence. Uh, so an um, automated driving task uh, can either be accomplished by increasing the intelligence level or connectivity level. Well, the ultimate goal, of course, is still to develop both levels, uh, develop both levels uh, for a safe, efficient, comfortness, and uh, fuel economy driving. 
uh, to develop the connectivity intelligence, the cl cloud control platform plays a very important role. Uh, cloud control system, uh, we define that as a new type of, inf uh, new type of infrastructure uh, is required in this procedure. Uh, the system, cloud control system, uh, is shown in this slide. It is consisted of vehicles, uh, which include both intelligent and connected vehicles, and uh, maybe some uh, traditional or uh, conventional human driven vehicles. Uh, and uh, roadside infrastructures, including V2X communication equipment, uh, some, onboard, uh, so some roadside computing device, and uh, roadside sensors, for example, the cameras, radars, lidars, and uh, so on. Uh, Above them, there are three levels of cloud. Uh, the edge cloud acquires data from several road sensor units uh, and handles uh, uh, from the road sensor, uh, roadside units and uh, also the vehicles directly uh, sometimes and handles real-time cooperative driving applications. Regional cloud handles city-level applications um, and the central cloud handles applications that uh, require some big data analysis. The central cloud is also connected to some national service platforms, uh, for example, insurance, my provider, and so on. Uh, the cloud control platform uh, embraces the concept of the cyber physical system, uh, which is also very uh, famous, short for the CPIs. Mm. So it divides the space to the physical space, the real traffic space we can see and take part in, and the, the cyberspace, which it runs in the cloud. Uh, the status of the vehicles uh, and uh, other traffic particip participators, like the bicycles, pedestrians, uh, and the even some, for example, obstacles and the traffic lights, traffic signs, everything from the physical world uh, will uh, either get connected or uh, get detected by the roadside sensors and their data will get collected and sent to the cyberspace through some standard, uh, standardized interconnection uh, interface and uh, uh, communication systems. The digital twin uh, system uh, shown in the gray color here uh, is generated in the cyberspace. Uh, every vehicle, each vehicle, each, um, uh, each uh, traffic participators have their uh, unique uh, object in the cyberspace. Uh, overall application and the communication task arrangement are handled uh, in the cloud and the decision and the control commands are sent back to the vehicles in the cyberspace. But before sending back to the vehicles in the, cyber, uh, in the physical space, they should firstly calculate it, get calculated in the cyberspace space. Sometimes some simulation and the forecast will be done in the cyberspace to verify the uh, decision making and the control command. Uh, before sending them to the real vehicles in the physical space. Mm. Uh, this page is a workflow of the cloud control system. Uh, here are the vehicles, uh, pedestrians in the physical space. Uh, here are some roadside uh, uh, base stations. Uh, on the base station or on the infrastructure, there are some communication device, cameras, radars, and so on. And this is the edge cloud, this is the region cloud, uh, and there are maybe more clouds above them. Uh, so the working flow of the cloud control system uh, is as follows. So first is acquiring those data. Uh, those with communication devices, like the vehicles, uh, can uh, upload their perception, and uh, their CAN bus data uh, to, uh, through the V2X communication, some to the roadside uh, 
wrote some unit, some directly to the uh, carrier and then to the edge cloud. And the roadside uh, sensors will capture some real-time information from those cannot directly communicate with them. For example, the pedestrians will be detected by the roadside sensors and send their uh, and uh, uh, generate their locations and the velocities, directions, and so on. And uh, the second step is the data fusion. Uh, there are multiple different levels of the data fusion. Uh, the roadside sensor uh, will handle the data fusion of multiple uh, different types of sensors. For example, data, uh, data fusion between the camera and the lidars. Uh, and then multiple roadside sensors or roadside unit will send their first data to the edge cloud. Uh, the edge cloud will perform some higher level multi roadside uh, unit uh, perception and combine them to the uh, one big dynamical map. And uh, higher level, like the traffic flow uh, information will be handled by the, by the regional cloud perception fusion. Uh, and then uh, the edge cloud, regional cloud, edge cloud, and the roadside compute, uh, roadside unit will try to uh, compute or to precise uh, their cal calculation tasks. Uh, so the roadside uh, unit will handle the calculation task with the highest uh, priority, or we say uh, the uh, that requires the lowest uh, time delay. Uh, then the edge cloud and then the regional cloud. Uh, by the way, the edge cloud is probably is the um, most uh, powerful uh, unit in this procedure. Uh, procedure. So lots of the uh, time consuming tasks like the decision and con control calculations should be done here. Uh, and some reaction based uh, uh, calculations will be done here on the roadside sensors. And then they will send uh, the control or decision in, uh, result back to the vehicles and uh, maybe warn the other uh, participators like the pedestrians in some 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 ways uh, for example uh, some information might be sent to their phones or some roadside uh, screens and the vehicles and the pedestrians may respond uh, what they get sometimes the decision data sometimes the control commands uh, this is the uh, working flow of the cloud control system so similar to the example of the onboard computing platform, uh, the cloud, uh, cloud control system is consisted of the basic platform, a basic cloud control platform and the cloud control applications. Uh, the basic cloud control platform provides some standardized interface functions and some useful tools to the developers. And the developers use the tools to, de to develop their own cloud control applications, uh, like the warning application, the uh, decision, and the control applications. Uh, the basic platform and the applications form the cloud control platform. Uh, if we look at the, a traffic system in the future, uh, the cloud control, the cloud control basic platform uh, contains the hardware, including some data center. This is a cloud uh, cellular station here uh, in charge of the communication, uh, roadside system, uh, intelligent roadside system uh, has the sensors uh, and uh, some uh, roadside uh, computing devices uh, and uh, so on. And they can provide some digital twin information. Uh, and uh, the digital twin uh, is a map of what, uh, what's happening in the physical space to a cyberspace. And uh, some prototypes 
uh, of some basic fundamental uh, basic fundamental uh, fundamental functions uh, that uh, cover multiple traffic scenarios uh, should also be provided by the basic platform uh, like the here formation control automated uh, parking and signalized uh, coordination for the vehicles and so on. And uh, what the application developer do is they, divide, uh, they design uh, the applications and uh, form some uh, specific services like here the shared vehicles, the uh, uh, mobility taxi service, uh, intelligent uh, public bus service, intelligent uh, logistics and so on. They de design their own applications and uh, uh, publish them on the base uh, cloud control platforms and together forms the whole cloud control system. All right. Uh, so we, uh, the or lab, did some practice uh, of the cloud control system in Beijing, Shanghai, Changsha, and some other cities in China. Uh, this work uh, supported by the Chinese government and uh, uh, most of the engineering work we have to see in the following slides are done by the startup company of our lab. Uh, it is called the Qing Cloud. Uh, a unit si uh, a roadside system uh, include the, uh, as we talked before, the cameras, uh, the radars, computing unit, some roadside computing unit, uh, some C2X, uh, CV2X devices, and so on. The cloud uh, includes the edge cloud, regional cloud, central cloud, and so on. They are connected by either the, uh, the fiber cables uh, here in the solid line or some wireless communications uh, here showing the dot as the dot line. Uh, in this picture, here is a deployed roadside, roadside system. Uh, uh, these are the, this is the reader, looks like this. Uh, this is the camera. And uh, for the camera to be able to see the vehicles and the pedestrians, we have the flashlight here. Uh, computing unit is included, uh, is installed here and the communication devices is installed here. Uh, we also developed several mobile roadside units for some rapid uh, testing and the validation, verification of our maybe perception or maybe decision algorithms. Uh, to actually uh, practically develop a uh, deploy the roadside infrastructures, infrastructures uh, some algorithms are also developed. This slide demonstrates the sensor model here and uh, some algorithms here we design that can automatically generate the sensor de deployment suggestions. Uh, uh, however, practically, uh, when trying to install those sensors, uh, the deployment locations are somehow limited because multiple factors uh, have to also get considered when choosing the roadside sensor deployment locations. Uh, for example, if it's in uh, 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 on-ramp or off-ramp, uh, maybe we cannot deploy or uh, roadside sensors there. We need to uh, uh, push forward or go, go back like 100 meter and so on. So some adjustment and the redesigns are of course still very necessary. There are some photos of the cloud servers in the data centers that we are currently using. Uh, the cloud, that, that's what the cloud look like, uh, just some servers. And uh, we have some, uh, we use some technologies to ensure they can work uh, 24 hours, uh, seven days. And uh, we are still trying to improve uh, the software running on the cloud. Uh, we have lots of the vehicles equipped, equipped with the, sensors, onboard computers, and uh, or embedded system. 
and uh, some V2X communication devices to verify the functions and test the performance of the cloud control system. Uh, those are the vehicles developed by the Tsinghua University. Uh, we also have some other uh, uh, so some other companies uh, also uh, contributed their vehicles and uh, test uh, their performance under our cloud uh, cloud control environment. Uh, there is a video. You should be able to see the video if the network bandwidth is good enough. Uh, this is an example of the digital twin system. Uh, here uh, is the camera view of the roadside camera. And uh, mm, the camera gets the position and calculates the uh, velocity of the vehicles. And uh, also we have the roadside readers. And so the velocity is not only get by the camera, but also fueled by the output of the readers. Uh, and also not only vehicles, but other traffic participators, participators like the pedestrian bicycles, are detected. Uh, both the object and the, their parameters are mapped uh, into the cyberspace. Uh, as you can see, uh, this blue one is a virtual testing vehicle. And uh, those white ones or green ones are the digital twins of the vehicles in the real world, in the physical space. So uh, equipped with the uh, uh, digital twin system or the CPS system, we designed some basic functions, uh, including the large scale perception, coordinated decision making, and the multi agent control, uh, and uh, tried to perform some demonstrations and the tests. People also used our basic platform to develop their own applications. Uh, this slide shows an example. Uh, including some accident warning, long range warning, uh, and uh, highway management and so on uh, for the driving assistance. And uh, sometimes give suggestions to the drivers. Uh, we are not satisfied in only giving suggestions to the drivers. So we developed some uh, decision and the control uh, algorithms and uh, test them, tested them with uh, automated driving vehicles. Uh, as you can see in this slide, there are some of them. Uh, most of them I have to say are still under developing and uh, testing. And uh, some of them are having them, uh, 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 we, we are demonstrating them in the uh, Yizhuang in Beijing. Uh, some specific systems are developed and applied, to, applied in practice already. Uh, this slide shows some uh, fuel economy driving for the commercial vehicles like trucks and so on with uh, cloud-based optimization and uh, dynamical map information. Uh, so with the help of the processing power in the edge cloud, some complex dynamical programming model uh, and algorithm can be applied and calculated in real time, uh, which is imposs impossible uh, if we only have some onboard devices, especially some embedded uh, devices nowadays. Uh, the fuel consumption reduction uh, achieved about 4.0% 4 .4 in typical heavy uh, scenarios. So basically we use the slope information from the digital map. Uh, if we can get some dynamic uh, information from the digital map in the future, like the uh, traffic light information, uh, the intersection information, on-ramp of off-ramp information for the highway scenario, uh, we believe we can achieve much better results in the future. Uh, another uh, application we already have uh, is to use the cloud control system to help optimizing the traffic efficiency. Uh, for example, getting the vehicle information from the taxis from the DD company, the traffic signal can get optimized according to the dynamical requirements. Um, 
requirements from the taxis and from the other vehicles. Uh, the average speed or in our test district uh, can increase from about 15 kilometers per hour to about 23, 24 kilometers per hour, which is very significant. So uh, as we already know what the cloud system is, the cloud control system is, in the following slides, we'll discuss uh, a specific applications. Uh, this application is, uh, we believe what will happen in the future with the help of cloud control system, which is the cloud-based formation control of intelligent and connected vehicles. Uh, a common way to design the ADAS and A automated driving is to develop some applications based on different driving scenarios, including like the uh, vehicle following, lane drop bottleneck, ramp merging, uh, intersections, and so on. Uh, however, the control logic would be very complex and it would be difficult to smoothly switch among multiple scenarios, uh, which could damage both driving safety and the traffic efficiency. So a unified decision-making and control framework that covers most of the typical traffic scenarios is uh, required. Uh, as we discussed before, the cloud control system excels at real-time data and information sh sharing and uh, can provide uh, some high definition, perception result, and the data mapping results and so on. Uh, the cl cloud control system is very good at management of multiple applications and can handle large scale vehicles coordinations. Uh, previously, we discussed about the two roads uh, for the development of intelligent and connected vehicles. And the connected uh, intelligence is a road of developing ICVs, or the key road of developing ICVs, at least in China. And uh, currently there are some uh, existing researchers on this field. For example, some researchers focused on the singular platoon scenario, which is uh, obviously too simple uh, to get practically applied. Uh, some works on the multiple platoons, uh, which means uh, only the le leading vehicle or the preceding vehicles have the uh, intelligence and the other vehicles just uh, follow them. Uh, and there is only the coordination among the preceding vehicles, which is not enough. Uh, is not enough. And uh, some research work on the learn assignment only, but only learn level assignment, no vehicle, detailed vehicle control. They just tell uh, vehicle A, you go to the learn one, vehicle B, you go to the learn two. They don't care uh, how the vehicle achieve their goals. Uh, and uh, what we interest, uh, what, what, is most interesting is a multi-learn formation algorithm. Uh, but uh, what we found, uh, most of them lacks of switching among multiple scenarios. They only focus on some specific scenarios. Uh, to take a look, this page throws some popular method for the multi-learn formation control. Uh, number one is the slot-based guidance. Uh, there are some virtual boxes on the road generated by the cloud, uh, probably, and the vehicles choose the boxes they want to follow uh, and uh, control themselves to follow them. However, the vehicles and the infrastructures operate separately and the lacks of optimization. Number two, uh, a bunch of researchers focus on the steady state formation control and the lacks of the consideration of the scenarios reaching. Number three, some researchers for, uh, work on the formation uh, structure change. Uh, they try to uh, find a method to dynamically change the formations, uh, but some of them use some centralized optimization method like the large scale uh, nonlinear MPC, uh, which could uh, be not applicable in real world because uh, a lot of calculations are required and so cannot achieve real-time calculation. 
And most of the researchers require predefined weak orders. Thus, they are not fl flexible enough for real applications. Uh, in our research, uh, there are two tracks. Uh, thrust one uh, focused on the road segment scenario, including multi-learn multi and round ramp and off ramp and so on, and develop some multi-learn formation control method. Uh, those multi-learn formation control will be shared with thrust uh, two, which applies the formation control method to the intersection scenarios. So thrust one provides a formation control strategy and uh, thrust two uh, provides a much, uh, formation structure requirement uh, and sent back to uh, the thrust, what we get in the thrust one. Uh, formation control of multiple vehicles solves the problem of steady driving of a group of vehicles, structure reconfiguration uh, when the driving scenario is changed and the vehicle drawing and leaving management. Uh, the structure of formation can get switched according to the change of driving scenarios. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the scenarios could make the formation control, um, uh, uh, the, the, the formation we are having formation control here, but the learn clearing scenario, which means there are some other conventional vehicles and the lane drops. Uh, so we have to change the formation from five lane formation to four lane formation. Similarly for the lane drop scenario. Uh, here we introduce a multi-stage framework of the cloud control formation control method. Uh, the initial position of the vehicles distributes randomly on the road and we expect them to drive with some specific structures, uh, which is uh, predefined by us, but the order, uh, pay attention to the order, uh, the, are, the orders are not uh, predefined, but only the structure is predefined. Uh, so there are two stages for the vehicle's motion. One is the uh, structure switching stage. The other one is the steady driving stage. We propose a centralized planning method to organize uh, the behavior of the vehicles, which of course, uh, as is centralized, should be running on the cloud. The vehicles are close to their desired positions and the threshold is satisfied. They change from the switching stage to the steady stage. And then, and then when the scenario change de is detected, they change back to the structure switching stage. Uh, when you, uh, we use the centralized planning to calculate the conflict-free behavior of the vehicles. And for each vehicle, we use the decentralized control to calculate the control output uh, input for the vehicles. Uh, given that it is hard to control the vehicles from the real world perspective, because vehicles uh, drive with different speed and have complex, uh, com complex conflicts. So we measure the desired speed of the formation from the speed of all the vehicles, and we can then get the relative speed of the vehicles, which could be easier for us to use. And uh, then the relative coordinate system is built. The coordinate uh, contains a relative, uh, several relative integer points. Uh, they are discrete, uh, di discrete uh, that the discrete integers uh, uh, laterally, uh, they are distributed by length and the longitudinally distributed by the falling gap, predefined falling gap. And by defining the available position of the vehicles uh, in the native, uh, in their a relative coordinate system, we can then get two uh, standard geometry, uh, geometric structure uh, by intuitively. Uh, the interlaced one, the picture in the left, and the parallel one. Uh, since we, we try to aim to improve the safety and the lane change efficiency, uh, here we choose to use the interlaced structure uh, as a standard formation structure. 
uh, in the relative coordinate system, vehicles occupy some points uh, to form interlace structure and can temporarily stay on their points when they are changing the structure. Uh, so a pair of number is used to represent the coordinate of the vehicles, uh, the learn ID, which is X, and the Y, which is a layer ID. Uh, besides, we define the achievement points for the vehicle at uh, each timestamp. Uh, relative motion mode one represents the vehicle could drive to their other eight points, their neighbor points, neighborhood points, and uh, uh, in also including their current point in one time step. And uh, relative motion mode two represents that they can drive to the around uh, surrounded four points and the current point in each step in order to re uh, regulate the motion of the vehicles and avoid collision, we assume <coughs> that the duration of each movement takes the same time. So before the motion planning, uh, we need to uh, assign vehicles to their targets, target locations. Uh, different uh, assignment may lead to some unsolvable conflicts among those vehicles, uh, which lead to some car uh, accidents. Uh, target assignment is a classical problem in robotics motion planning and the control uh, uh, because the robotics or robots usually have very, uh, they can perform straight strategies and uh, the, uh, the speed of the robots are usually relatively low. However, in the vehicle, or vehicle target assignment, we need to consider some complex constraints and avoid a collision between or among the vehicles. Uh, in order to assign the vehicle target, we should define the cause of the assignment at first uh, by applying the A star algorithm for the vehicles to calculate the cost of the uh, uh, cost the vehicles need to travel to their target locations, uh, which is then defined as the cost cost. Uh, then the cost matrix, short for C here, and the assignment matrix can be defined accordingly. And uh, some target assignment problem can be modeled as an integer program, programming problem. Uh, there are many mathematical algorithms already, uh, and they are designed to solve this kind of assignment problem. And the Hagorian algorithm uh, is one of the most commonly widely used one, which can calculate the optimal assignment with the minimal cost. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, because of the complex constraints of the vehicles, some of the assignment may lead to some uh, un, uh, inevitable collision. Uh, so here we define three types of conflicts that may cause the collision um, because the trajectory of the vehicles will overlap. Uh, so here we call three and the vehicles four uh, is the first type of conflicts. Uh, if vehicle three stops here, it will block the way of the vehicle four. So the vehicle four is conflict with vehicle three. And there are two other types of conf uh, conflicts shown in this slide accordingly. And uh, we can prove that only the first type will cause the collision. Uh, besides, we found that the first type of conflict can be resolved by exchanging the target of the two vehicles. And uh, this exchange will not cause new conflict. We can prove as well. And all the conflicts will be resolved in finite steps. Uh, based on the defined algorithm and uh, assumptions, we can then build some coordinate map to describe the motion of uh, the adjustment of vehicles. Uh, in this slide, it there shows an example of two-step process for the form formation structure switching, uh, step one and step two. And uh, the coordinate map build, uh, is built to detect the collision. Uh, once a collision is detected, the collision, uh, the conflict solving algorithm will be used to solve them.
Uh, this is the same example uh, as in the last slide, uh, where the vehicles change from the five lane formation to three lane formation. And the upper part shows the movement uh, in the uh, relative uh, coordinate system. The lower part shows the state in the real world. Uh, the points uh, in the real world are the key points, as we discussed before. Uh, and they are used uh, for the vehicle trajectory planning. The vehicle need to plan the trajectory on their own to follow their uh, the key points. So uh, algorithms before this slide are done by the uh, cloud co uh, cloud control system by the cloud by the server. And here uh, the slide after. Uh, after this slide, done by the vehicles. Uh, since a vehicle should pass a sequence of points to achieve its target, uh, the multi-stage uh, multi trajectory is planned uh, based on the Bezier curves to perform single lane change uh, and dual lane change and the multi lane change and so on. Um, the right points represent the key road points uh, corresponding to the points in the relative coordination system. And the time for the vehicles to travel on each uh, segment is the same. We have to make them the same. Uh, so as for the longitudinal control, we can calculate the length of the trajectory as their input. Our goal is to control the vehicle to ar uh, arrive uh, at each point at the desired time, strictly at the desired time. Uh, the state of the vehicle is fixed at the initial and uh, uh, terminal or the final points. Uh, and they have the spatial temporal constraints uh, at the intermediate points, the points in the middle, the middle right points, they have to follow the spatial temporal constraints. Uh, the second order state equation is used to model the longitudinal behavior of the vehicles. And then the control energy, uh, we use the uh, accelerate uh, is calculated as an object, objective function. Last, the longitudinal control problem is modeled as the optimal control problem. And uh, with the state equations, uh, interior points of the constraints, initial and the terminal constraints, and the boundary constraints, we can solve this, uh, solve this equation. Uh, as, and as for the control in accuracy, since we use the PID preview control uh, as the lateral control measure, the inaccuracy may ac uh, accumulate over time. Uh, and we model our longitudinal control problem into a multi-stage long-term control problem, which may also lead to uh, some accumulation <coughs> of inaccuracy. Thus we use uh, the rolling horizon framework to replan the control input after some fixed steps. We will not talk too much about them today. Okay, in this slide, we provide an example of, uh, of how to uh, use, a, uh, 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 to show the relative motion, relative state, and uh, what happens in the real world. Uh, the green vehicle, uh, needs to catch up with the other four vehicles already uh, to form a five vehicle formation. And uh, the first step uh, is to move forward by one, by one layer and then change to the right lane. Uh, and the real world motion one shows uh, its trajectory. And for the second step, it should accelerate. Uh, the vehicle must move forward uh, one more layer and uh, successfully drawing this formation. This is what happens. So we will summarize the method of the multi-vehicle formation control into the following three parts. Number one, the real world status. Uh, and number two, centralized planning. And number three, decentralized control. Uh, the centralized planner uh, in the cloud uh, 
uh, they can detect the real world changes and uh, chooses the desired formation structure and generates the target locations and uh, actual target states in, because that's including location and the velocities for the vehicles. And the uh, vehicles are assigned to the targets and uh, some conflict free motion to travel to the target are also calculated and planned. The decentralized controller on the vehicle plans the trajectory according to the relative path uh, and uh, somatic stage control input uh, are calculated for the vehicle control and the control commands are sent to the actuators. The process changes the state of the group of vehicles to adapt the uh, driving scenario. Okay, so this is how the closed loop works. Uh, we did some simulations uh, to, uh, to verify uh, the function and uh, evaluate the performance of the proposed method. Uh, case study is firstly conducted. Uh, the circle represents the key points and uh, uh, the lines with specific colors represent the target, uh, the trajectory of the vehicles. Uh, so this uh, video shows the from three lanes uh, to the one lane formation. Uh, in the second case, vehicle change from a three, three lane formation to a two lane formation. Uh, and the, this process takes two cycles. And uh, this case, there are eight vehicles uh, change their formation from three lanes to four lanes in one cycle. Uh, we also did some more simulations uh, in a lane drop bottleneck to verify the performance. Uh, the length of the scenario is about 1,000 meters uh, with the lane drop bottleneck and uh, the uh, uh, benchmark method, the compared method is the default model in Sumo. We also did this simulation in Sumo. Uh, the, there could be some cause of the congestions uh, at some high vehicle volumes uh, if we only use by the default model in or the default method in Sumo. As you can see, uh, the figure shows the result of uh, average traveling time of all the vehicles, uh, where the blue lines shows the result of the benchmark method, Sumo method. The red line shows the result of our formation control method. It indicates that the formation control method keeps a low travel time under all the input volumes. Uh, the x axis is the volume. Um, but the travel time on the benchmark method become uh, higher when increasing when the input volume is higher than about 1,000 vehicles per lane hour. Uh, it shows that formation control method achieves higher traffic efficiency. Uh, this video shows the process of the formation control method under three different input volumes. You can see that under these three volumes, the formation control method can smoothly control the vehicles and change their lanes to keep a steady and high speed. Uh, if we put the method together, uh, we can see uh, that the benchmark method leads to congestion, congestion uh, uh, with the formation control method well, the formation control method can still keep high efficiency and no congestion happens. Uh, that also tells us uh, we really need cloud control system. We need communications. We need coordinates among those vehicles in the future. Uh, even if we can develop very high level uh, onboard intelligence, the vehicles could be selfish and the uh, lack of the uh, optimization of the whole traffic system, they can still lead to some traffic congestions. Uh, the spatial temporal distribution also, seems the, also indicates the same result. We won't talk too much about this slide. Um, we also conducted simulation uh, in the color simulation environment uh, and uh, evaluate the performance of the formation control method in multiple traffic scenarios. Um, the figure in the red, uh, right hand side shows the route of the vehicles in the simulation. 
yeah, as we tested before, there are some issues playing these videos. So I'll directly drag it. So this video shows uh, some relative state of the vehicles uh, in the left. And uh, in the right shows some real world motions of the vehicles. Of course, the real world means those in color. There are six vehicles in the very beginning. A ve ad, uh, another vehicle joins them and the lane drops from four lanes to three lanes. So the vehicles change their lanes coordinately. And uh, then the lanes go back to four lanes and uh, the cloud tell them to change back to four lanes. The vehicles cal calculate and uh, uh, perform the lane change. Oh, oops. Okay. And there are some more scenarios as we discussed uh, in the beginning. There are some conventional other vehicles. The vehicles can change their lanes uh, to uh, pass them. And uh, it, uh, this method also uh, can be used in some lane drop scenarios and other scenarios and so on. All right. Oh, the, vehicle, uh, the video is not, no. All right. So uh, uh, if you remember, we try to uh, discuss if we can have a unified method that can cover multiple traffic scenarios. We only discussed about the one dimensional scenario. Uh, and now we will talk about the two dimensional scenarios. Uh, some typical uh, challenging scenarios like the multi-lane on-ramps and the multi-lane intersections and so on. Uh, we would like to extend our method, previous method, to the two-dimensional scenarios uh, and solve the problem that, uh, that existing method usually consider only some particular um, scenarios and lacks the uh, generality. Uh, so the idea is very simple, but before that, we will see uh, what existing method already have. Uh, there are some uh, existing, existing methods that can be applied to both single lane and multi lane intersections, like the reservation method, uh, which is a classical method, and uh, some virtual platoon method. Uh, we will discuss this method a bit. Uh, the idea of this method as an intersection uh, is to form virtual platoons and uh, to let the vehicle, all the vehicles coming from different directions to, to pass the intersection one by one. And the sequences were determined uh, based on the distance of the center, uh, the distance of the vehicles to the center of the intersection. Uh, and the method need to define some virtual leading vehicles and provide some following input uh, for the uh, real vehicles. And therefore, the disadvantage of this method is uh, very obvious that it only consider one dimensional uh, geometry topology, which result very low traffic efficiency because usually we can we have not only a platoon but multi lanes. So geometric topologies with some high traffic efficiency uh, is required. Uh, to achieve that, we first need to build some conflict model of the inter uh, unsignaled at the intersections, including crossing, molding, and the uh, diverting uh, conflicts, as you can see. Uh, based on the conflict model, we can do uh, number uh, 12 traffic flows uh, coming uh, from four directions to calculate whether they are conflict or not. And based on this, we can um, draw the conflict relationship in the diagram in, or in the graph, and we can use graph theory to solve this problem. Uh, give an example, we can draw the vehicle's conflict relationship. Uh, this, has a, this has a vehicle with different IDs coming from different traffic flows. And uh, we can draw the vehicle's conflict uh, relationship graph based on the uh, conflict, uh, conflict graph. And uh, with the help of the graph theory, the depth first spanning tree uh, can be deployed to calculate the conflict-free geometry topology. 
So before proposing a method as a multi-learn unsynchronized intersection, we have two questions. That is number one, uh, is a virtual platoon method extendable in a multi-learn intersection? And number two, will organizing vehicles in the formation really improve the efficiency uh, in a multi-learn intersection? So first of all, we check the conflict relationship to ensure the safety. Similarly, depth for suspending tree is also used to determine the conflict free passing sequence. But the difference is that the definition of the conflict uh, constraints uh, could be extended. See, you can see in the picture, the definitions could be different and uh, the passing sequence with the same uh, common sequence could be different. Then let's see how we have improved the virtual platoon method. Uh, consider the vehicle coming from north, east, to south, and west for directions uh, in an unsynchronized intersection. We rotate them to parallel lines and make it easier to watch. And uh, what in the left is a stop line. So the vehicle comes from the right to the left. Then let's look into whether organizing vehicles in the formation could help in uh, improving the traffic efficiency. We still start from the single vehicle platoon, which means a single vehicle is considered as a node in the, as the same as in the classical method. Utilizing the depth first spanning tree, a possible passing sequence can be obtained. As shown in this slide. Uh, so the origin platoon consisted of single vehicle in each layer. Now we consider uh, another virtual platoon that consider that cons is consisted of multiple vehicle formations in each layer. Uh, in this virtual platoon, it treats subgroup of vehicles instead of only one group as a node in the spinning tree. So we can get the same result, but each node indicates multiple uh, vehicles. Similarly, uh, the same still for layers. So after uh, passing sequence is generated, we found it is possible to comprise the platoon uh, by sharing longitudinal space in one layer. Uh, so those subgroups without conflicts, uh, for example, the uh, green vehicle in the second layer can furthermore pushed in and those with conflict cannot. So a compressed formation can get generated. The layers uh, is from four layers to three layers, which means we are saving some time, uh, are save, uh, are achieving some more efficiency for the traffic system. All right, so here shows the final process in the multi-lane intersection at first, some messy vehicles uh, get together to form a multi lane formation based on the method we talked about before. And then the formation was divided, the vehicles are, uh, are assigned and form some subgroups here. And then we treat each subgroup as a node, as a single vehicle, like before. The depth for suspending tree method is applied to generate the conflict free platoon coming from all the four directions. Uh, as you can see in this slide, I'll just skip to this slide because of the time. Uh, I'm not sure if the resolution is good enough for you can see, uh, but uh, this animation shows the vehicles could pass the intersection uh, without the collision. And uh, also, uh, uh, we can summarize them like this. The virtual platoon method is still very efficient in the multi learn and synchronized intersections. And uh, compared with the single vehicle control, the multi vehicle virtual platoon method can further improve the traffic efficiency. And finally, we will uh, give the summary. Uh, so, in, today, uh, so in the slides today, we discussed about the background and the localized ICV solutions in China. We know that China is uh, promoting five fundamental or basic platforms. 
uh, take the basic cloud control platform, for example, we discuss the cloud, the structure, the details, the architectures of the cloud control system, and uh, it is a new type of infrastructure uh, for the traffic systems in the future. And uh, we also discussed uh, the application uh, of which can be applied for the cloud control system, which is the formation control for the intelligent and the connected vehicles. All right, so that's all for today. Uh, I'd be glad to take some of your questions. Uh, let me see your the Q and A sections here. So I got two questions. Uh, number one is uh, how to prevent systematic safety accidents of ICVs. Uh, how should we make decision when the when simula uh, simultaneously interpreting the signals from different sensors? For example, the data from the vehicles is inconsistent with the data from the roadside centers. Okay, uh, this is very important questions. So those guys who are working on the perception uh, is uh, making a lot of effort on the data synchronization. Uh, in our research, uh, there are uh, two things uh, are considered in our research. Number one, uh, the data, uh, of course, uh, cannot uh, can either not get synchronized nor, or cannot get real time. Uh, we want the real time data uh, because we want, want to know what is really happening in the environment. So some of the data, uh, we gave up some synchronization and uh, try to use the data as some delayed data. Actually with the communication, not only data delay, but some quantization and uh, truncation uh, will be also included. Uh, there are some communication chains uh, between the roadside sensors, uh, the cloud and the vehicles. So when designing the vehicle controllers, we have to consider them. Uh, we should some use some predict method uh, to predict uh, the uh, locations of the vehicles uh, together with the onboard sensors. And also should design some vehicle controllers uh, that can adopt those uh, delays, uh, truncations and uh, quant uh, quantizations. Uh, and the number two is how to uh, ensure the safety. Uh, we all know that the cloud might not be that reliable, right? Or computer or laptop or desktop freezes, uh, it happens. And the communication uh, is not stable enough too. Uh, the communication, the 4G or 5G or later uh, is not that reliable. So the final decision-making and control should be handled by the vehicle itself. Uh, there should be a sandbox on the vehicles. Uh, there, and there should be a supervisor in this sandbox. Uh, it, the supervisor watched what's happening uh, in the uh, surrounding this vehicle and also listens to what the cloud sends to, uh, to the cloud tells the vehicles to do, including some decision making and control uh, these commands. Uh, if the supervisor decide, okay, this, there are something wrong, it is unsafe. So the supervisor should uh, cut off the cloud uh, command input and uh, take over the uh, control of the vehicles. So the uh, safety is ensured by the, uh, we can call it a sandbox mechanism, uh, which is an onboard me mechanism. All right, and uh, question number two. Uh, in what ways will the popularization and the promotion of smart cars change people's lives? Uh, 